What I want to do right now is introduce you to a couple of so-called actuarial symbols or some actuarial notation that is internationally used uh, to be able to quickly refer to some of the concepts, probabilities, uh, that we introduced so far. And why do we do that as actuaries? Because often um, we need to use these probabilities of survival, probabilities of dying a lot in our calculations. So we want to have a very um, quick and uniform way to, to refer to such probabilities. So the notation SXT, FXT, and then small fxt, that's standard in statistics for the survival function, the cumulative distribution function, and the probability density function. If we look at the actuarial notation, we're going to call that international actuarial notation. And for the survival and the death probabilities, we're going to use the notation tpx, which is the same or which refers to the same probability as the survival function of the x-year-old evaluated in t. So the right subscript X here refers to the age of my policyholder and the T, the left subscript, refers to the duration of the interval over which I want to evaluate, I want to calculate this survival probability. And then you know that the survival probability, it's the probability that Tx is beyond T and making the connection with the random variable T0, that's the same as saying the conditional probability that T0 is beyond t plus x given that t0 is larger than x. So that is for a survival probability. For a death probability, we're going to use the notation q. So the tqx is the probability that tx is less than or equal to t. So it's a probability of uh, dying within a certain interval of time. And again, we can write it uh, by using the connection between tx and t0, right? Now, one um, probability here that, or one symbol that we're also going to introduce here, which is a little bit more difficult perhaps, is the notation for a deferred mortality probability. So I denote it here with u bar t qx. And what does that mean? I want to assess the probability that x is going to survive another u years and will reach h x plus u. And then I know what's the probability that in t years, after reaching uh, hx plus u, my policyholder will die. So that means that I'm interested in evaluating what is the probability that tx takes a value between u and u plus t. So let's take a, um, let's take a brief moment huh, to reflect a little bit on that and to rewrite this, um, this expression slightly. Huh? So what we're interested in is the deferred mortality probability, uh, which captures the probability that t is taking a value between u and u plus t. So if I would picture this on a timeline, and that's always a good recommendation for you to do, then I'm looking at an individual hx at time zero. So h is on top of my axis, time is below my axis. And I want to know what is the probability that this individual will die between time point u and u plus t. So that means between ages x plus u and x plus u plus t. So one way how we can uh, evaluate this expression is by saying, well, what is the probability that x will die over the red interval? minus the probability that x will die in the blue interval. So what remains then is then the interval in green. And that's exactly what I'm interested in with this deferred mortality probability, right? So I retrieve the events that connect to the probability in green. I retrieve it by looking at the events connecting to the, uh, to the red line minus the events uh, connecting to the blue line. So what I retrieve then is that's the probability that tx is below or equal to u plus t minus the probability that tx is less than or equal to u. Now using my connection between my uh, CDF and my survival function, I can also say, well, this um, CDF, that is one minus the survival function evaluated in u plus t minus 
one minus the survival function of next year old evaluated in u. So further simplifying this expression, I retrieve the expression that you also see on the sheets for this particular uh, probability deferred mortality probability. So let's return to um, the sheet. So we covered the actuarial notation introduced over here. So you see the expression that we just obtained on the iPad for the deferred mortality probability. There is one additional comment to make here at this point, and that is if your duration t for tpx and tqx, if that refers to a period of one year, then we simply drop the subscript t. So if t is equal to one, we'll just uh, write qx and px in short. Okay. So adding a couple of uh, visuals to this uh, deferred probability. So if we want to assess the probability that x will die between ages x plus u and x plus u plus t, then I can picture that as follows. So we then want x to survive in magenta until age x plus u, and then he or she should die between uh, x plus u and x plus u plus t. And that's indicated here in red. So this deferred mortality probability can therefore be written as a multiplication of a survival probability in magenta and a probability of dying in red, right? So the way to calculate this deferred probability is here at the bottom, it's UPX, the survival probability, multiplied with TQX plus U, the probability of dying within T years, given that you reached age X plus U, okay? So that's uh, a nice way to frame this, to picture this deferred probability. Um, we could also think a little bit more about how to deal with TQX, the probability of dying in T years from now for next year old. And the way how this timeline pictures this uh, probability of dying is by saying, well, let's look at the whole um, interval from X to X plus T or equivalent huh, time interval from zero till T, right? Um, what we then want to pick is we're going to pick one point in time, time point S, and we're going to say, yeah, um, one event that is captured in the probability TQX, one such event is the scenario where our policyholder survives until H X plus S and then dies right after reaching H X plus S. And we know that um, survival until H X plus S, that's with probability SPX. And then given that you've reached HX plus S, you're going to die right after. That probability is expressed, as we discussed earlier on, by the force of mortality, mu X plus S, multiplied with DS, the length of the interval. Yeah? And what we can do now is if we let the S run from 0 to T and capture all these probabilities, then we get in total the probability of dying for an X-year-old in T years from now. So TQX can be expressed with an integral expression as the integral from zero to T of SPX multiplied with mu X plus S dS. That's another way of putting it. And my motivation here is purely intuitive. If you want to go through the uh, more mathematical uh, approach, huh? that's what I'm going to do on the, on the next uh, slide. So what you're then doing is you're going to use the connection between your force of mortality, the force of mortality, which is a hazard rate, which is a probability density function divided by a survival function. And that gives you an expression for this probability density function. It's the survival function, TPX, multiplied with the force of mortality. Now, what I know if I want to evaluate the probability of dying, the TQX, then I'm interested in evaluating the CDF of TX in point T. And evaluating a CDF of a continuous positive random variable can be done by integrating uh, the corresponding probability density function. So that's what, we've, that's what we see over here. That's something you learned in the probability and, and statistics course. Now, if you replace this probability density function with the expression here on top, then you get exactly the expression that we derived intuitively or that we motivated intuitively on the previous sheet. 